Hey, what's up? So another quick video here. We are going to mount our front caliper. And again, this goes just for about any bike with disc brakes. So take you through a quick how-to here. All right, so what we're gonna do, again, pretty straightforward. Um, oh, this is the um, pad kind of block. This little piece here, this red piece. You wanna definitely save that for whenever you have to travel with the bike, take the front wheel off. The way you have something to lock the pads out so they don't get uh, compressed and uh, then you have to jam a tool or screwdriver in there to separate them again. So that saves you a lot of headache. So again, pretty straightforward. We're going to take our two 5mm bolts that come standard on pretty much any Shimano SRAM brake. And we're going to go, I like the front brake outside of the cable, so we're going to reroute it there. And you'll see here is the uh, the holder mount, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do that after we uh, mount the caliper. Again, you want to be careful not to touch the pads or the rotor, we don't want to get any of our uh, oils on them, contaminate them. Uh, this, again, makes more work for you. So, take that there. And be very careful, and we're just going to line that up. Good thing about Shimano brakes is, I'd say seven, eight times out of ten, when you're going to straighten the caliper, you can squeeze the brake, and they'll self-center. Um, otherwise, you have to kind of play with it a bit. So, and again, there it comes stock with Loctite. You can see it there. I add a little bit of grease. Again, thinking ahead for when you might have to take it out, whether you swap brakes or have to swap the caliper out. It makes your job a lot easier because just putting it in there with the bare Loctite, um, you are going to have quite a struggle trying to get those out, especially if they've been set in there for, for a bit of time. Okay, so... Now we have our caliper loosely set in there. So we can take out our cable guide here. And sometimes you can fit it in, sometimes not. This particular one is going to be one where you have to open it up. So take our take our guide out here. Open it up like that. Just get that out of the way, and that's just going to clamp on there like that. Let's get our our bolt back in, and then I'm just going to slide that down there. This keeps the cable nice and out of the way. I'm going to do a future video where I route the front brake up through the stem cap here for when you want to spin the bars around. If you're feeling like some unnecessary resistance, you definitely want to back out of it and it helps to kind of stabilize the cable like that as you tighten the bolt down. Again, everything is nice and slow and gentle. We don't we don't want to we don't want to force anything. Okay, so there's our cable, and now with the brake uh, somewhat loose, you can see it move there quite a bit. So we're going to take it, add some, add a couple of turns to the lever here. Just to kind of all I'm doing is kind of turn, uh, turning the cylinder in to, um, so the lever is a little bit more firm. And with it held firm, again, this is just an initial test to see if we can get it to stay in place, which we will be able to tell soon enough. What I notice is the rotor is still being pushed a little bit, so we'll go back out. Very gently, you gotta kind of like sneak up on it just slightly.
There we go, that's more even. And give it a spin test. Little ching there. And then it'll be good to, good to start off with. Okay, and that is the basics of how to install your caliper and get your basic alignments down. Um, going forward in the future, you can loosen it and do kind of fine little adjustments with your hands. And you, another trick is the index card. You take a, an index card or a business card and fold it um, over the rotor as you insert the wheel. Um, squeeze the pads and then tighten it down. Um, and then that will give you your spacing. Um, quick tip, this really only works on hydraulic brakes. If you have a, um, a cable disc brake that's actuated by a standard brake cable, you'll have one pad that moves and one pad that's fixed. So what you, for that, what you want to do is have both pads backed out as far as possible. The fixed pad will have a Torx or 5 mil um, Allen, Allen key, so you want to back that out. Make sure the caliper itself is centered in the rotor, and then once it's centered, you want to turn in the fixed pad until it's right up against the rotor and the reason being is because uh, because the fixed pad doesn't move the um, actuating pad on the non-drive side that's going to push the rotor into the fixed pad and if you have the pad way back here it's just going to keep bending the rotor into the pad and eventually you'll warp your disc so the, you want the pad against the rotor and then that way you have a nice tight uh, feel you do your adjustment on your uh, arm and then uh, and then you're good to go and again that's for for uh, for cable disc brakes thanks and uh, we'll see you on the trail bonus clip hey what's up I'm Chris Maida with uh, giant bikes and bikesandlife.com links will be in the description below just gonna take you through a quick run through here technical section so a lot of riders ask me um, you know what's kind of the best body movement technique to get over you know different obstacles in the trail and what better place to demonstrate that than here in New England so I'm going to come through, you can see my bike back there, uh, just a quick line, we're going to get over this little rock here, obviously video makes everything look smaller. This is about, I'd say, two and a half feet or so, we're going to come there, and then we're going to hit this guy right here, and then just kind of traverse through there. So I'm going to show you some of the body language that goes with this. Basically for kind of, for things like this, we have multiple obstacles, you always want to be looking at least five to seven feet ahead of, um, of where you're going kind of keeping track of that front wheel and then you're going to want a nice neutral kind of semi loose position you want the bike to be able to move under your body to be able to absorb the hits on the obstacles here um, and then it's just going to be a matter of just kind of forward and aft movement as your bike um, sucks up the hits as you go over so I'm going to run through this line here real quick because it is freezing out here and uh, we'll see you at the end of the trail Okay, so as you approach, you want your seat in kind of just a medium position. We're going to come up over, pump, and then we're going to pedal out of it. And that is how you traverse a double line section and multiple trail obstacles. Hope this helps. We'll see you on the trail.